Thank you very much, Mr. President. I want to go back to voting rights. And as Yamish mentioned, Republican legislatures across the country are working to pass bills that would restrict voting, particularly Democrats fear impacting minority voters and young voters, the very people who helped to get you elected in November. Are you worried that if you don't manage to pass voting rights legislation, that your party is going to lose seats and possibly lose control of the House and the Senate in 2022? What I'm worried about is how un-American this whole initiative is. It's sick. It's sick. Deciding in some states that you cannot bring water to people standing in line waiting to vote, deciding that you're going to end voting at 5 o'clock when working people are just getting off work, deciding that there will be no absentee ballots under the most rigid circumstances. It's all designed, and I'm going to spend my time doing three things. One, trying to figure out how to pass the legislation passed by the House, number one. Number two, educating the American public. The Republican voters I know find this despicable. Republican voters, the folks out in the — outside this White House. I'm not talking about the, le the elected officials. I'm talking about voters. Voters. And so I'm convinced that we'll be able to stop this because it is the most pernicious thing. This makes Jim Crow look like Jim Eagle. I mean, this is gigantic, what they're trying to do. And it cannot be sustained. I'm going to do everything in my power, along with my friends in the House and the Senate, to keep that from, uh, from becoming the law. Is there anything else you can do about it besides passing legislation? The answer is yes, but I'm not going to lay out a strategy in front of the whole world and you now. Then, on a related note, have you decided whether you are going to run for re-election in 2024? You haven't set up a re-election campaign yet, as your predecessor had by this time. <laughs> My predecessor need to, needed to. <laughs> My predecessor. Oh, God, I miss him. Um, no, the answer is yes. My plan is to run for re-election. That's my expectation. And then on, on, on one other note, on bipartisanship, your old friend, Mitch McConnell, says you have only spoken to each other once since you took office and that you have moved far left since taking office. Do you see it the same way he does? Have you rejected bipartisanship? No, I haven't at all. I've been meeting. When's the last time a president invited the opposite party down at least a half a dozen times to talk about issues, everything from how we work? I'm, we're working with a group of 20 members of the Senate right now in House on how we reestablish our ability to make computer chips, and how we get ahead of the game, how we can work together. We're working together on a bunch of things. But look, I know Mitch well. Mitch knows me well. I would expect Mitch to say exactly what he said. But this is a matter of making sure that I would like Republican — elected Republican support. But what I know I have now is I have electoral support from Republican voters. Republican voters agree with what I'm doing. And so, unless Mitch says the last thing I did is — last piece of legislation is so far left, well, then he ought to take a look at his party. Over 50 percent of them must be over that edge as well, because they support what I did. Uh, okay. Um, where am I here? Let me see. You also just made some news by saying that you are going to run for re-election. I said that is my expectation. So is that a yes, that you are running for re-election? Look, I'm, I, I don't know where you guys come from, man. I've never been able to travel. I'm a great respecter of fate. I've never been able to plan four and a half, three and a half years ahead for certain. And if you, it, do, if you do run, will Vice President Harris be on your ticket? I would fully expect that to be the case. She's doing a great job. She's a great partner. She's a great partner. And do you believe you'll be running against former President Trump? Oh, come on. I don't even think about it. I don't have — I have no idea. I have no idea whether it'll be a Republican Party. Do you? I know you don't have to answer my question, but I mean, you know, do you? I mean, look, this is 
the way I view things, I become a great respecter of fate in my life. I set a goal that's in front of me to get things done for the people I care most about, which are hardworking, decent American people who are getting really having it stuck to them. I want to change the paradigm. I want to change the paradigm. We start to reward work, not just wealth. I want to change the paradigm. If you notice, don't you find it kind of interesting that my Republican friends were worried about that the cost and the taxes that had to be had, if there is any tax to be had, as they talk about it, in dealing with the, the act that we just passed, which puts money in people's pockets, ordinary people? Do you hear them complain when they passed close to $2 trillion Trump tax cut, 83 percent going to the top 1 percent? Do you hear them talk about that at all? I love the fact that they found this whole idea of concern about the federal budget. It's kind of amazing. When the federal budget is saving people's lives, they don't think it's such a good idea. When the federal budget is feathering the nest of the wealthiest Americans, 90 of the Fortune 500 companies making billions of dollars, not paying a cent in taxes, reducing taxes to the point that people who are making, you know, if you're a husband and wife, school teacher, and a cop, you're paying at a higher rate than the average person making a billion dollars a year is. Something's wrong. Their newfound concern. I'm concerned, look, I meant what I said when I ran, and a lot of you still think I'm wrong, and I respect that. So I'm running for three reasons. To restore the soul, dignity, honor, honesty, transparency to the American political system. Two, to rebuild the backbone of this country, the middle class, hardworking people and people struggling in the middle class. They built America and unions built them. The third reason I said I was running was to unite the country. And generically speaking, all of you said, no, you can't do that. Well, I've not been able to unite the Congress, but I've been uniting the country based on the polling data. We have to come together. We have to. So from my perspective, you know, it's, uh, to me, it, it's about just you know, getting out there, putting one foot in front of the other, and just trying to make things better for people. Just hard-working people. People get up every morning and just want to figure out how to put food on the table for their kids, be able to have a little bit of breathing room, being able to have, make sure that they go to bed not staring to the ceiling like my dad did, wondering whether, since he didn't have health insurance, what happens if mom gets sick or he got sick? These are basic things, basic things. And I'm of the view that the vast majority of people, including registered Republicans by and large, share that, 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 same, that same view, that same sense of what is, uh, you know, what's appropriate. Responsibility for everything that's happening at the border now. I hear you talking a lot about the past administration you decided to roll back some of those policies. Did you move too quickly to, to, roll, to roll back, back what? I'm sorry? Policies. Did you move too quickly to roll back some of the executive orders of your predecessor? First of all, all the policies that were underway were not helping at all. Did not slow up the amount of immigration and as many people coming. And rolling back the policies of separating children from their, from their mothers, I make no apology for that rolling back the policies of uh, remain in Mexico, sitting on the edge of the Rio Grande in a muddy circumstance with not enough to eat. I make no apologies for that. I make no apologies for ending programs that did not exist before Trump became president that have an incredibly negative impact on the law, international law, as well as on human dignity. And so I make no apologies for that.